Hi everybody, let's in this video cover three different types of taxation, progressive, proportional and regressive taxation. To get our head around these different types of taxes, we need to understand the average rate of tax, also known as the ART. As a word definition, it's simply the amount of tax paid as a proportion of total income earned. There is an equation to work it out. You just take the amount of tax paid, divide by total income times by 100. You get a percentage at the end and that percentage simply says uh, the amount of tax paid as a proportion of total income earned. So now having understood that, let's get into these three different types of taxes. Start with a progressive tax. A good example of that is a progressive income tax. Many countries around the world have this type of a tax system. And this is a tax where as income rises, the average rate of tax goes up. So as people get richer, uh, the amount of tax they pay as a proportion of their income will go up. In a progressive income tax system, that's because as people earn more, they end up in higher tax bands where the tax rates are higher. So the amount of tax they pay as a proportion of their income goes up. A proportional tax is also known as a flat tax. There are countries around the world who will have a flat income tax. So no matter how much you earn, the income tax rate is always the same, always the same. And therefore, as a definition, this is a tax where as income rises, the average rate of tax stays exactly the same. The amount of tax you pay as a proportion of your income is always whatever that flat income tax rate is. So for example, if that income tax rate is 20%, no matter how much you're earning, the amount of tax you pay as a proportion of your income is going to be 20%. Whereas a regressive tax, so for example, any indirect taxes are regressive, whether it's fuel duty or cigarette duty, alcohol duty, VAT, whatever, they're all regressive. This is a tax where as income rises, the average rate of tax actually falls. So as people get richer, the amount of tax they pay as a proportion of their income actually goes down. So this is a tax you can see that burdens those on lower incomes more than it does those on higher incomes because those on higher incomes are paying less tax as a proportion of their income compared to lower income households. That's a regressive tax for you. Best way to understand that is with a numerical example. So take two different workers here. You have a low income worker, worker A, earning £10,000 a year and a high income worker, uh, that's worker B, earning £50,000 a year. And let's say in a given year, they're both buying the same amount of fuel. Now bear in mind that fuel duty is a specific tax, a unit tax. So if they're both paying the same amount of fuel, then they are going to be spending the same amount on fuel duty. The fuel duty is going to be exactly the same in number. It's a specific tax. So let's call that £1,000 of fuel duty per worker that's being paid per year. But now let's work out the average rate of tax. So we're going to take £1,000, the amount of tax paid, divide by their income. So for worker A, 1000 divided by 10,000 times 100 is an average rate of tax of 10%. So what that means is that fuel duty um, is taking 10% of worker A's total income. That's how much they're paying of their income in fuel duty. Whereas for worker B, you take 1000 divided by 50,000 times 100. That's an average rate of tax of only 2%. So only 2% of worker B's income is going in fuel duty. So we can very clearly see that regressive taxes burden those on lower incomes. They take a greater proportion of the income of low income households than they do of high income households. But now guys, let's get into a progressive income tax system in more detail, understand how it works. Um, and also let's do some key calculations that you might need to be able to do. So here is an example of a progressive income tax system made up numbers here. And you can see that there are different bands and linked to those bands are different tax rates. And as people's income increases, they pay higher rates of tax. The average rate of tax will therefore be increasing. But crucial to know, guys, that you only pay the tax rates for the income earned between the numbers in the band. So ignore the ones in each case, just to make our life easy. Take someone that's earning 14,000 pounds a year. Yes, they're going to end up in the 20% bracket, but not all of the 14,000 pounds is gonna be taxed at 20 just the income between £12,000 and £50,000 will be taxed at that rate. So if someone's earning £14,000, that's only going to be £2,000 worth of income is going to be taxed at 20%. The rest of it is still going to fall within the tax-free allowance. The first £12,000 will still be taxed at nothing. And similarly, take a, a worker earning £60,000 a year. Yes, that puts them in the 40% bracket, 
but only £10,000 is going to be taxed at 40%. Only the income above 50000 up to 150000 which is only £10,000 in that situation. Now let's look at some key calculations you might need to be able to do and we're going to do all these calculations in relation to an engineer who initially is earning £48,000 a year in salary. So the first calculation, you might need to work out taxable income. Of someone's annual income, how much of that is taxable? How much of that is subject to income tax? Easy equation. This one, you take that annual income minus off the tax-free allowance, minus off um, the amount of income you can earn before you start paying any income tax. So for the engineer here, their current income is £48,000 and you minus off the tax-free allowance, which was £12,000 in this situation, and that gives you taxable income of £36,000. Easy. The next thing you might need to be able to do is to work out total income tax paid. There isn't a set equation, but this is quite a helpful technique. I've just said work backwards through the band. So what you want to do is when you have the annual income, put them into a tax bracket and work backwards from there. So this engineer earning £48,000 a year, put them in the relevant bracket and that bracket is going to be the 20% bracket. So they're in there and then work backwards from there. Now we know only the income above £12,000 up to £50,000 is going to be taxed at 20%. So for this engineer, it's the income between 12 and 48000 So that's going to be £36,000 at 20%, so times 0.2. The rest of their income is going to be ta completely tax-free. They're still going to receive that tax-free allowance. So all they're going to be paying is 36000 at 20% and that gives you £7,200. So that's the total income tax paid by this engineer. Then you might need to work out the average rate of tax. We've already seen that equation, but let's apply it to income tax now. So it's going to be the total income tax paid divided by total income times 100. So for this engineer, we've already worked out income tax paid. That's 7200 divided by total income, which is 48000 times 100. When you work that out, you get a figure of 15%. So that means... Of the total income this engineer is earning, 15% of it is going to the government in income tax. And it's interesting to look at that figure and why it's 15% and why it's not 20. Even though all of the taxable income is taxed at 20%, not the entire total income is taxed at 20%, the engineer is still receiving the £12,000 tax-free allowance. So that's why the figure is not 20% here. It's not down a bit because the first 12,000 is tax-free, but of the income that is taxed, which is a vast majority, it's taxed at 20%. So it's close to 20%, but not exactly 20%. And then the last equation you might need to be able to do is to work out the marginal rate of tax. And all this is saying in words is the extra income tax paid when any extra income is earned. So if someone receives a pay rise of that extra income earned, how much extra income tax has to be paid to the government? As an equation, you take the average equation and you put changes in it. So the change in income tax paid over the change in total income times by 100, again, you get a percentage at the end. And that percentage simply says of any extra income that you're earning, how much of that as a percentage is going in income tax. So let's go to our engineer and let's say that in a year, an engineer receives quite a big pay rise, a pay rise to £60,000 a year. We want to work out the marginal rate of tax. Well, first thing we need to do to get the change in income tax paid, we have to work out the new income tax paid. So go back to your income bands and work backwards from there. So at £60,000, we can see this engineer fits in a 40% bracket, but as we know, only the income above 50,000, in this case up to 60, is going to be taxed at 40%. That's only 10,000 pounds. So it's going to be 10,000 pounds uh, taxed at 40%. So 40%, that's 4,000 pounds. And then all the income from 12,000 to 50,000 pounds is going to be taxed at 20. For the engineer, that's the full band. So that's going to be 38,000 times 0.2, 20%. And that works out £7,600. When you add that together, you get the total income tax paid. Remember, they still receive £12,000 tax-free. So total income tax paid is now going to be £11,600. So now we can plonk numbers into this equation. So to work out the marginal rate of tax, the change in income tax paid, 11600 minus 7200 is 4400 And the change... In total income from 48,000 to 60,000 is 12,000 multiplied by 100 and that gives you a percentage to 2DP of 36.67%. So what that means is 
of the extra £12,000 this engineer is earning, 36.67% of that is going to the government in income tax. And again, that rate is clear to understand. It's not going to be 40% exactly, because not all of the additional 12000 is being taxed at, 20, uh, at 40%. Only uh, 10000 is being taxed at 40%. There is 2000 being taxed at 20%. So that's why the figure is close to 40, but not exactly 40. So that, guys, covers all these different types of taxes for you, but also going into more debt with progressive taxation and how it works with various calculations. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video as we dive now into fiscal policy. See you then. Thank you.